Once upon a time, there was a story that began with these words. In the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. This story was part of the Gospel of John, and it created a big difference between Christianity and the religion it came from, called Judaism. The Gospel of John is different from the other three stories in the New Testament. The stories of Matthew, Mark, and Luke are about a man named Yeshua, Jesus in Greek, who was a Jewish teacher and healer. He talked about the kingdom of God and was called the Messiah. Sadly, he was arrested, executed, and then came back to life after three days. John's story is different. It tells its own unique tales and has a different timeline for Jesus' actions. John's story starts at the very beginning of time. The most important difference is that in John's story, Jesus is clearly seen as God. Matthew, Mark, and Luke have many ideas about who Jesus was, but only in John's story is he recognized as the living God. The word logos in the first sentence of John's story is often translated as word, but it means much more. In Greek philosophy, logos means reason or logic and is the force that makes the universe work. It's like the mind behind creation. The person who wrote the Gospel of John was a Greek-speaking Roman citizen who knew a lot about philosophy. The people who read his story were also Greek-speaking Romans living in a world influenced by Greek ideas. So when John used the word logos, he probably meant it in the same way the Greeks did, as the powerful force that created everything. This story of the Logos and Jesus changed the way people thought about God and the world, and it's been a part of Christianity ever since. But then John does something surprising. He says that the Logos, the powerful force that created everything, became a man. The whole point of John's story is to show how this divine essence came to live on earth as Jesus Christ. In other words, John is claiming that the one who made the heavens and the earth lived as a simple Jewish man, was born from a woman, and experienced all the things a human does, like eating, sleeping, and growing up. Jesus even says that he and God are the same, and that seeing him is like seeing God. This idea of a God-man wasn't new in the ancient world. The Romans and Greeks often worshipped their leaders as gods. They built temples and altars for them, and people held religious ceremonies to honor them. The Romans might have learned this from the Greeks, who had a long history of making humans into gods. In Greek myths, there were many heroes and demigods who became divine. Alexander the Great was even considered a god during his life. The Greeks might have gotten this idea from the Egyptians, who believed their pharaohs were divine. The pharaoh was associated with a god, like Horus, and by doing religious rituals and ceremonies, the pharaoh's human nature became filled with divinity. After death, the pharaoh would become a god in the sky. So, John's story of Jesus is not completely new, but it still has a big impact on how people think about God and humanity. The idea of a divine king might have started in Mesopotamia with a ruler named Sargon the Great. Later, a king named Naramson declared himself divine by combining his name with that of a powerful moon goddess. This concept of a god-man is very successful and has been part of many religions. The only religion in the Near East that didn't have this tradition was Judaism, the religion of Jesus. Why do people want to make a human into a god? It's because they see the god as having human qualities, like wanting power and control. As time went on, the gods in organized religions started to take on more human characteristics. When this happened, the relationship between gods and humans changed. The gods were no longer just a part of nature, but they became rulers. They didn't just control natural forces, like light or rain, but they also controlled people's lives and justice. Since gods don't have human features like mouths, eyes, or hands, they needed someone to represent them on earth. This person would speak for the gods, make decisions, and use their power to control others. So, the idea of a god-man is connected to the desire for power and control, and it has been a part of many religions throughout history. Making a human into a god was a common thing in the ancient world. People like kings, pharaohs, and emperors, as well as priests and prophets, were seen as connections between humans and the divine. 
But when it came to Jesus, there was something different. Unlike other Godmen, Jesus was considered the only human manifestation of the One and only God in the universe. This idea was hard for many early Christians to accept. Some Christians believed that John was wrong and Jesus was just a man. Others thought that John was right, but Jesus was a different God, not the one and only God. There were even debates about whether the Logos, or divine force, was Jesus himself or just living inside him. These disagreements show how challenging and disruptive the idea of Jesus as God was for early Christians. They had to think deeply about what it meant for a man to be the sole manifestation of the one and only God in the universe. Some people in the early church believed that there were two gods in the universe, Yahweh and Jesus. They thought that these two gods were enemies. This idea was called ditheism. A famous supporter of this belief was a man named Marcion. He was from Asia Minor and came from a wealthy family. He studied Greek philosophy and the Hebrew scriptures. Marcion couldn't understand how the God in the Bible, Yahweh, could be the same as the loving and forgiving God revealed by Jesus. Yahweh was often violent and demanded harsh punishments. Marcion thought that the world created by Yahweh was full of suffering and evil. Marcion believed in Jesus' divinity and agreed with John's idea of the Logos as God. But he also believed in Yahweh as the creator of the world. He read the book of Genesis literally and saw Jesus and Yahweh as very different. Martian's beliefs caused a lot of controversy in the early church. His ideas were eventually rejected, but they show how difficult it was for people to reconcile the God of the Old Testament with the God of Jesus. Marcion and some Greek-speaking Christians, known as Gnostics, believed that there were two gods, the God of the Hebrew Bible, Yahweh, and the loving God revealed by Jesus. They thought that Yahweh was a lesser God who created the world, while the loving God was the Logos. According to the Gnostics, the Demiurge, or lesser God, was responsible for bad things like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, the flood, and the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. By separating the creation of the world from the loving God, they tried to explain the flaws and suffering in the world. Marcion went to Rome to share his ideas with the largest Christian community there. He offered a huge donation to the Roman church, which allowed him to stay in the city as a respected guest. His beliefs were controversial, but they showed how some early Christians tried to separate Christianity from its Jewish roots and make it a completely new religion. Marcion went to Rome and started collecting his teachings into two manuscripts. One was about his theology, and the other was the first attempt at creating a New Testament. His New Testament included an edited version of the Gospel of Luke and ten letters from Paul. Marcion believed that Jesus was God, but not the God of the Hebrew Bible, Yahweh. He thought that Jesus was a different, unknown God who had just been revealed to humanity. Marcion argued that Jesus came to save people from the evil creator God of the Bible. This meant that Christianity could not be linked to Judaism anymore. When Marcion presented his ideas to the church leaders in Rome, they were not happy. They rejected his theology and returned his donation. But Marcion continued to spread his beliefs in Asia Minor and founded a large ditheistic church. The church leaders in Rome wanted to keep the idea of one God even though Christianity was already very different from Judaism. They didn't want to separate Christianity completely from its Jewish roots. In the early church, there was a big fight over the idea of one God. Marcion and the Gnostics believed in two gods, Yahweh, the Creator, and Jesus, the loving God revealed to humanity. The church leaders in Rome wanted to keep the Jewish belief in one God. This disagreement was not just about theology but also about power. The church leaders believed that one God meant one bishop ruling over the church. They said one God, one bishop. The church's insistence on one God created a contradiction. The church was spreading quickly, and it was hard to explain how a Jewish peasant could also be God. This disagreement threatened to tear the church apart and could end Christianity. By the 200 C, Christianity had spread throughout the Roman Empire, and some high-ranking members had converted. 
the empire started persecuting Christians for not following the old gods. Many Romans blamed Christians for the instability in the empire. In the 280 C, the Roman Emperor Diocletian tried to get rid of Christianity. Churches were destroyed, and Christians were persecuted. This was called the Great Persecution. After Diocletian retired, there was a lot of fighting between people who wanted to rule the Roman Empire. One of these people was Constantine. He had a dream about a cross and won a big battle. He then made Christianity legal and stopped the persecution. Constantine didn't know much about Christianity, but he thought it was a kind of sun cult. He believed in one God, like the church leaders, and he wanted everyone to believe in that. When Constantine became emperor, he found out that Christians had different beliefs about God and Jesus. Some believed in Jesus' divinity, while others believed in his humanity. There was no agreement in the church about this. Some Christians believed that Jesus was divine from birth, while others thought he became divine after his resurrection. Constantine, the Roman emperor, wanted a clear answer about Jesus' nature. In 325 CE, he called a meeting of church elders in Nicaea to decide this. Constantine wanted to make sure that the idea of one God was not violated. This meant that beliefs like Martians and Gnostics' dytheism were not accepted. The church elders had to find a way to keep the idea of one God and also accept Jesus' divinity. They decided that Jesus was of one substance with God, the Father. This idea was based on the writings of Tertullian, who believed that God existed in three separate beings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He called this belief the Trinity. So, the compromise at the Nicaea Council was to accept the Trinity as a way to reconcile the oneness of God with Jesus' divinity. This decision helped shape Christianity and its beliefs for centuries to come. After the Nicaea Council, many people in the church were still confused about the Trinity. Some elders suggested that the Father and Son had a similar substance instead of the same substance. Later, Augustine of Hippo, a famous theologian, explained that God is one but exists in three forms, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three share the same divinity and have always existed. Augustine said that believers should accept this as a mystery. In 451 c, the church at the Council of Chalcedon affirmed that Jesus was both fully God and fully human. This decision made Christianity very different from the Jewish idea of one indivisible God. It also set the stage for future conflicts with other monotheistic religions.